In this next lesson, we're going to be discussing some of the uh, features of the browser and how to navigate about the browser within X3. So upon logging into the system, uh, most likely you're going to be presented with a uh, initial screen uh, such as this. Uh, you'll have over here in your left list all the uh, various um, areas of the system uh, that you've been granted rights to. Um, so for some of uh, the super users in the system, you might see a full complement of options over here on the left hand side. Um, if your role within the organization is limited to a particular functional area, you might only be granted uh, access to say like the sales block or the purchasing block. So kind of the way that um, Sage seeks to organize um, all the elements within X3 is kind of by these functional areas. So um, kind of starting from the top and moving down, um, this administrator's uh, function here, um, again, this is more so uh, just granted to the um, general system administrator, um, those individual individuals within the organization that are responsible for, you know, creating users and, um, you know, assigning badges and certificates to the users. Um, those individuals that are basically responsible for the general system maintenance. Underneath uh, the development menu, um, this again is some more technical features of the system, uh, things such as, you know, being able to go into the tables um, is found here. Um, if the individual needs to do any maintenance to the screens within X3, um, you know, maybe a particular user wants an additional field added to a screen um, under your development block. Um, you know, you'll be brought to a section where you can accomplish things such as that. Um, under the setup area here, uh, this section right here, again, um, this is a little bit more technical in nature, but again, some additional user privileges um, are assigned under the setup feature. Um, administering your printers uh, within the system is uh, done through here. Um, X3 is uh, has a workflow engine associated with it to, you know, kind of uh, send out automated emails would be one application for that. Um, that type of functionality is governed through here. Uh, in addition, another uh, important thing is the organizational structure within X3 and all its various elements. So uh, basically setting up your corporate structure within the system um, is accomplished through here. Um, we have a general parameters block in here. So this is a lot of kind of your system uh, folder level parameters um, are set up uh, within this section here. Um, a lot of your statistical elements are set through here. Um, a popular feature within X3 here is its various querying. Um, you'll oftentimes hear these referred to as requesters within the system. Um, basic, basically, um, user-defined inquiries that you can set up within X3. Uh, that those are defined here uh, through this usage block. Um, performing your imports and exports. Another important um, feature within the software: um, importing and exporting. You know, especially during the um, initial kind of implementation phase, you know, importing uh, customers and suppliers and open orders and so forth. All those various templates can be found uh, within this block here. Um, in addition to that, you know, many of the remaining blocks here, uh, customer relations, purchasing, uh, sales, stock, manufacturing, and so forth, um, these are kind of where one would come to to set up the general parameters within each one of those functional areas. Um, one thing that you're going to notice within each of these uh, blocks here is you're going to have a section here for entry transactions. So for instance, under my purchasing, I have entry transactions for the various planning workbenches, for RFQs, for orders, for receipts. Um, I come down under my sales block, I have an entry transaction block in this section for the quotes and orders, deliveries, and so forth. Um, th this entry transaction is an important concept within X3. Um, basically, these entry transactions for all your um, transactional elements that users are going to be recording on a day-to-day -day basis, 
sales orders, purchase orders, uh, deliveries, invoices. There's going to be a um, you know a functional screen that the user is going to go into to perform that, and it's going to be through these entry transactions that you can grant certain users certain views to the data or to the function. So that is to say, you might have uh, certain users in within within the system that just need um, say in the context of sales order entry, they just want a very limited view of the function um, because they want it to be um, a very fast for them. So through the entry transaction, you can basically go through and limit their uh, view of the fields on that function, um, whereby maybe you have an administrator of the department that needs to see the full complement of all the fields um, so they can see, you know, um, you know the margin for instance maybe they want to be able to see the margin um, levels through there <clears throat> you can have a more more full featured entry transaction to grant to that particular user so um, and we'll, we'll talk more about these entry transactions as we go through the lessons here but those are some of the more important features through the setup block um, under common data uh, in x3 uh, common data is basically you know all basically the common elements within the system um, that you're going to be using for your setup so again it's um, you know broken into the various areas here you know we have general common tables uh, you know for things such as you know countries and currencies postal codes languages uh, exchange rates and so forth uh, we have common data um, relating to various product tables within the system um, we got, you know, product statistical groups will be an important concept that we go through in these lessons. You know, your various reordering policies are also defined herein. Um, you know, if the organization is interested in uh, doing quality control, uh, some of the basic uh, common elements for that are going to be set up within here. Um, if the organization is using manufacturing, uh, we have a manufacturing table elements in here where you can set up you know individual employee IDs um, you know calibration guides uh, if you're using like the weighing scale and so forth we have a logistics tables block down here um, in the logistic tables we can set up you know various return reasons and credit reasons um, you know for our uh, you know invoicing both from a purchasing and a sales perspective um, within the logistic tables, you can also set up your various INCO terms and delivery modes um, that are applicable for the organization. Um, next here we have our BP tables. Uh, so within here, um, this business partner, um, you're going to encounter that um, concept all throughout the course of X3. Um, when um, you see that term BP, you know, that's short for business partner. And um, a business partner is basically any entity that the organization is, you know, conducting business with. So it can be a customer, it can be a supplier, it can be a, you know, a carrier or a sales rep. Um, so that's just something important to uh, make note of here. So in the BP's tables uh, section here, um, you know, customer statistical groups, supplier statistical groups, your various payment methods for your customers and your suppliers. Um, you know, if, they're eager, if you're entitled to uh, any um, early uh, payment discount, those can be set up uh, herein. Okay. Uh, the next section here for your um, general ledger accounting tables, uh, these will be very important to the uh, finance group. So it's in this block here that you establish your general ledger accounts. Um, X3 over here has a concept of what we call an analytical dimension. Uh, which is typically set up to represent a cost center or a department, um, you know, a product line or a sales territory. Those are very common um, applications for the analytical dimension within X3. And it's basically a tool that enables uh, the user to kind of slice and dice their uh, general ledger data on a little bit of a finer basis. Okay. Um, other important features within this sec um, section here are with respect to your calendars. So both your fiscal years and your fiscal periods are going to be defined uh, herein. Okay. So 
you got your BP accounting tables with a lot of your, uh, you know, your bank accounts are going to be defined um, in this section. We got a fixed asset block down here. Here's your section where you set up your business partners. So again, like I said, customers, sales reps. Uh, we have the concept of a factor that you can set up here if um, your business does anything by way of selling uh, your receivables to a third party at a discounted rate. Um, prospects, leads, and again, we're going to go into all these in a great level of detail. Here next, uh, we got our products block here. So anything from your part master, your product categories, your standard cost are all going to be defined in this section. We have a bill of material block for those uh, organizations that do manufacturing or subcontracting manufacturing. Okay. Uh, we got a product configurator um, block here, uh, a block for costing, customer relationships, and so forth. Okay. So again, common data, very important concept within the system, and uh, um, something that we're going to encounter all throughout our lessons here. Uh, from there, uh, we have these blocks here for customer relationship management and all their uh, respective functions. Here in our purchasing block, in here, this is going to range from everything between you know setting up price list, uh, doing purchase requests and RFQs, um, purchase orders, purchase receiving, purchase invoicing, purchase returns. We're all going to be captured within that block. Here in your sales block, um, again, price list setup, um, you know, uh, issuing quotes to customers, entering in sales orders, um, performing allocations to customers. Um, that again, that allocation concept is very important within X3. Um, it's basically a inventory reservation against an open order. Um, so we'll see that. Uh, preparing your shipments, uh, issuing your deliveries, uh, doing your invoicing, you know, sales returns, sales credits, <clears throat> those are all uh, captured within this area. We have a stock section here. Um, most of your, you know, stock inquiries are going to be found within here. Um, running a perpetual uh, inventory report is going to be done in this section. Um, any very, you know, any um, miscellaneous inventory adjustment can be done in here. Um, location moves, uh, quality control, uh, cycle counts. That is all going to be uh, conducted through this uh, stock block here. We have a manufacturing section here. Uh, so, you know, setting up your elements for work centers and your routings are going to be done here. Um, a lot of your analysis uh, for your production, uh, many inquiries for manufacturing, um, both from a planning perspective, a um, analysis of your WIP, um, you know, analysis of the costing can be done here. Um, you know, issuing work orders, tracking work orders, um, you know, the whole nine yards is going to be done in this block. Um, next here is your costing section here. Um, so down in this block, uh, you can do everything from establishing standard costs for your products, um, analyzing your uh, manufacturing activity is done here. Uh, there's various cost transfer routines. Um, X3 is um, you know, very sophisticated in the sense that you know, it keeps track of your product valuation on a variety of different basis. Uh, standard costing, average costing, lot costing, FIFO costing. And again, we'll we'll get into all that in some of some of our subsequent lessons here. Down here, we have a financials block. Um, here in this section, this is where you'd come to to enter in manual journal entries. Um, you know, reversing entries, recurring entries are all done uh, herein. Um, some of your month and close routines are going to be uh, conducted in this block. Um, then all your various inquiries, balance inquiries, uh, GL detail inquiries um, will be done in this section too. We have a section here for accounts payable and accounts receivable accounting. Uh, so some of your miscellaneous customer and supplier invoicing will be done in this section. Um, you know, ana analyzing um, what X3 calls an open item, which is either an open receivable or an open payable. 
um, can be, you know, those items can be managed in this section. Um, your payments, um, whether it be an AR cash receipt or an AP payment issue, would be done in here. Okay. Here in the declaration section here, um, this has a lot to do with uh, some of the tax management features within X3. We have uh, a budgetary features within X3 um, that we can keep. We have the fixed assets section in here if we wish to manage our uh, fixed assets in the system. Uh, this section here, uh, this ADCs, um, that's short for advanced data collection. So uh, some organizations that do uh, kind of advanced warehousing or, you know, manufacturing might want to use uh, handheld devices um, and have their production team uh, record their various stock movements or stock receipts, um, you know, their time reporting and so forth all via a handheld device. Um, there's some integrations with X3 there. Okay. Uh, down here in our usage section here, um, a lot of your activity as it relates to managing your batch server is going to be done in this block. Um, you know, a lot of your statistical uh, analysis um, can be performed here in. Your importing, your product imports are done here. Okay. Then we also have this printouts block down here, which uh, has, uh, you know, basically all your various uh, requesters and crystal reports can be invoked uh, via this block. Okay. Um, then there's also some other things down here for, you know, trans, you know, text translations and so forth that are also made available. Okay. So yeah, so those are the uh, kind of the primary layout. And like I said, depending upon the rights that you have, um, your list over here might be more limited or more full featured. Um, but these are kind of the primary ways um, that we access our various elements. Um, so, you know, with that, um, you know, if I wanted to, for instance, act, um, access my sales order entry fee function, I could come under my sales block here, come over to my section here for orders, then click on orders. And that's going to bring me into my sales order entry function. And depending upon how you have your uh, system configured, um, you'll be presented with uh, a list such as this, um, which represents all the various entry transactions that the user can choose from. So again, maybe a more, more full featured entry or a more standard limited view. Okay, so I could come into this full one here. And when I click on that link, that's going to tunnel me into my sales order entry. Okay. And we're going to talk more about the menu layout in here in some of our subsequent lessons. Uh, suffice it to say for right now, this is the sales order entry. And if I wanted to end out of the sales order entry, I'm just going to come um, over here on the right hand side in my uh, right list of functions and click on close page and that in part will um, kick me back out to the main menu.